Welcome, beautiful goddesses, to Teach Travel Talk. I am Megan, and my mission, goal, and vision is to help guide you through the crazy journey of life and of being a human and having this human experience. Because until we realize that we are the creators of our reality, we can either make life very difficult for ourselves or we can make our world incredible but it's all about how we perceive our world and the world around us so this is for you yes you the one listening so that I can uplift and empower you to look within yourself and find that inner light love guidance and intuition that will lead you to unbecome who the world told you to be and bring you back to who you were meant to be and who you were supposed to become in this life. So let's dive deep into conversations that will bring you teachable moments to implement throughout your daily life and to help reprogram the way we think. Welcome beautiful tribe or welcome back to Teach Travel Talk where we are here to teach one another how to travel through this human experience by sharing and talking about our stories. Our stories are so important to us. They create the essence of who we are, and it's important to share that with other people, to see that, well, we are all the same. We are all going through this journey of being a human on this earth, and we need to find other people that are on that same wavelength as us. And that is what I did today. I found an amazing person that I thought would be an incredible guest to share her story. And her name is Bethany Briggs. She is an amazing woman that I have met and she has become truly a great friend. And today we want to talk talk you through finding your tribe. Why is it so important to find a tribe? Why do we need that connection with other people? How will it help us on our spiritual journey? And how to become connected with those people? How to even find your tribes? And how many different tribes should we have? Well, I can't wait for you to get some teachable moments in this episode. And I think you will take away a lot from it. If you haven't already joined the tribe, please come on over to facebook.com slash teach travel talk tribe. Please make sure to leave a comment, review, give me a like. I always greatly appreciate that. It helps me to keep going with this and realize how important it is to have a platform to share our stories and to share other people's stories. So I can't wait for this amazing connection that I had with Bethany. So let's begin. Welcome, everyone. I'm so excited for you to be here, and I'm so excited for Bethany to be here. I'm so grateful for you, Bethany. Bethany Briggs, would you please introduce yourself to the tribe? (laughs) Hello, Megan. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me here. I I appreciate this. It's, It's an honor to be here, to be with everyone. Um, my name is Bethany. I'm a writer. I'm a yogi. I'm a self-care practitioner. Um, I'm a luminary, a business owner. I am an accountant, a bookkeeper. I'm a consultation manager, a teacher, homemaker, healer, and empath. That is a mouthful, but oh my goodness. <laughs> you are a woman of so many things, yeah. which I love. I think I resonate with that. When people ask me all the time, I'm like, but I don't just have one title. I've done so many things. (laughs) Right. Yeah. You resonate with so many things. And I got to the point where I'd be like, what is my title? And it's like, well, this is my title. You know, it's a mouthful, but hey, it's who I am. (laughs) And I think it's hard because we typically tend to like push those things aside and not be like, no, this actually is who I am. So I love that you embrace all of the beautiful things that you are. 
So Bethany, I first want to ask you, how did you become your most authentic self? I became my authentic self. Um, Man, there was a lot of things that came into it, but what really started the journey was Kundalini yoga, life coaching, um, personal development, so like courses, um, and then really just working through all those traumas and blockages and stepping into my confidence. Um, and yeah, and that's pretty much getting into the mindfulness practices, um, you know, trying my curiosities and just reaching for the stars and never giving up. Um, and the biggest thing is being grateful every day for everything and then being the best version of myself every day that I can be. And then loving myself and forgiving myself for it. So, I mean, there's a lot more to it, but in a summed up version, that's pretty much how it all came to be. Yeah. And what do you think, like, what helped you or what made you start that journey of kind of self-discovery and doing all of this, these things for yourself? What, what really pushed me was when I was tired of playing the victim, when I was tired of feeling bad for myself, being mean to myself, feeling like, you know, oh, and also having this thing of everyone's out to get me. I had this intense anxiety. I was worried about everything, every little thing. Oh, this would drop. Oh my gosh, I'm worried about, you know? And so letting that go um, really helped. But yeah, those, those things were what was holding me back. And once I jumped into like working through them, I don't know, it was like 180 change and here I am today. (laughs) No, that's so powerful to even be aware that you are in those states because most people don't even want to be aware that they're playing the victim or that they're being you know overly mean to themselves or just so worried with external circumstances so first of all kudos to you (laughs) that you (laughs) recognize that and you know even propelled yourself to start doing things that are gonna get you out of that rut which is awesome. (laughs) So something I really wanted to talk about with you today, because it's something obviously how me and you met was finding our tribe. And I really wanted to ask you, how do you feel that finding a tribe really helps you on this spiritual journey and self-development? I think when finding your tribe, because when you find your tribe, you find like-minded individuals that kind of have the same like ideals. There might be a little difference because we're all different. We all might have our little different thoughts, of course, (laughs) but generally it's like all we're in a collective. There's like unity there. Um, And like how we met, it's just like the universe guided us. And it was kind of like, you know, putting it out there to the universe. Like, I want this, I want this tribe where I feel nourished, supported and heard and loved. And then it just like putting it out there and like meditated on it. Then all of a sudden, like just everyone fell into place that's in my tribe. And thankfully you were part of it. So it's just amazing. No, I agree. I'm so glad that the universe connected us. I think um, that is a huge thing, asking for what you want to receive and finding those things. Do you think that it is better to find different groups of tribes and not just kind of stick with one tribe? Yes, I have many different tribes, I'll be honest. So I have like, you know, there's, there's just like different groups of women. And then I have some that are like co-ed with men and women, but it's just like different, I guess, different groups, you know, and it connected differently. And sometimes we like collide, but yeah, it's, it is like different tribes, but they make up the whole, and like the whole unity of it all. I feel like. No, I agree with you because even that you need, um, 
different tribes to hold you kind of like accountable for different things. You know, some people like book club and it's like, oh, cool. I have a tribe where we all love to read books or, you know, this, I have a tribe for manifestation. It's like, cool. I want to have this. And, you know, even our unicorn talks, our unicorn, like we are unicorns. I need a tribe for unicorns. (laughs) Yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I resonate with that deeply. Yeah, because I could just count off the top of my head at least four tribes that I have, like different tribes. But like you said, they all bring in a little different aspect. You know, one one of them is more like, I don't know, they're all fun and enjoyment. So it all equals out. But, you know, it's just those different mm-hmm. interactions, those different like personalities you meet and then they trigger like you know different synchronicities and like different yeah it's just I think it's important to have diversity and then it also brings the unity into it mm-hmm. kind of run diversity into the unity <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree and because even that let's say like if you know, let's for entrepreneurs, you need to have a networking, but you can't go into your networking tribe and be like, oh my God, today this happened to me. Like they'd be like, um, we're supposed to be talking business, but then you should have a tribe where you could go in and be like, hey guys, yeah. I'm having a bad day. Help me. Um, so there is always that and finding these different groups. I know that um for me, that was like the hardest part was. Um, opening myself up to finding these tribes and accepting that they're going to hold space for me and not, like you said, not judge me, not, um, you know, do these things that maybe we'll say low vibrational people will bring you down and make you just feel so guilty for being a human and having these feelings that we need to work through. So I will ask, how has uh, tribes helped you in so many ways? Well, it's helped me expand my spiritual awakening. It's helped me with my physical, like my physical body. It's helped me with my emotions. Like you were saying, like being that nourishing to support, to have that place to go to. And also accountability. You know, there's accountability there because it's like, you guys can, we can do challenges together. And that's what I love doing is like doing a challenge or like a check-in or, you know, let's do yoga together or let's just have a talk, you know, let's meditate together, like all these different things. Or I like, I like smoking cannabis. Let's smoke together, you know, like whatever. And each group is different that each tribe has like the different aspects, like I've already said. Um, but yeah, yeah. I don't, I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> Okay. It happens. It happens. No. And I agree with that. I definitely, um, you know, tribes have helped me so much in my gro- growth, 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 <laughs> and uh, growth. Together. I like that. We can. And I feel like, you know, that's why I wanted to talk about this because they're so important for us and we need to have them, especially I feel Right now in this world, we've been so disconnected from one another, especially having to be at home, not being able to see people. And all of this is the time where we need to connect the most. And which is amazing because even right now, you know, you're in a whole different state than me, but we can connect with one another and, you know, be over Zoom and even probably with your challenges and stuff we're still collectively doing this together. Um, So yeah, I think it's a a huge part of us. And as a human, we have to connect. Definitely. And I, so moving from California, because I grew up in California, moving here to Michigan with me and Brian, my husband, we didn't have anyone here except for two people that we knew. But then, and for a minute, I got super, you know, like it helped me a lot to move here. It was like the biggest, like that was that catalyst to like really empower my life to like for growth and stuff. But it also was like losing, not losing my family, but you know, like leaving my family. That was my tribe before all my friends, but that was my tribe. But then coming here and being able to learn and find all these new tribes and finding them online where we can connect globally is just 
even more impactful, I feel like, because it's like you're across the country almost, but we have this energy like exchange and imagining what's happening in between our energy exchange, you know, everything that it's touching Mm -hmm. in that, like almost California is 2,600 miles away. So I'm going to assume it's a little, it's similar, (laughs) maybe a little more, but you know, (laughs) but you know, there's that energetic exchange that we're doing. And that's what I love about the, you know, the, so like the, the platforms like zoom and Facebook and all like, you know, clubhouse hopping, like all those different things. Cause it brings us all together on this like common unity finding trip. Oh, I like that. Yes. And I will say, right. There are so many resources to find tribes, you know, and yes, Facebook is a really big one. If they have groups for everything, <laughs> Just type it in the search button and you will find <laughs> Right. Oh my gosh. Yes. So what about, um, especially for finding tribes that align with us, how do you feel about, I guess, either letting go or if you don't resonate with a group, you know, because I know that having boundaries, is really hard for people and letting go of people is really hard. How would you, I guess, um, help people to let go of tribes that no longer are in alignment with themselves? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because recently I had, I had the same thing that happened. I was a part of this group and it got disabled, um, opening a space up. But, and so at that time, this time I was forced to let go, which I had trouble letting go. But once I did let go and decide, okay, well, okay, it's out of my control. I'm going to surrender to whatever's supposed to happen here. I just felt this peace and I felt so much lighter and brighter. And I don't have this thing looming over me like, oh, you need to go on here. You need to go on here. Like, it's like, it's more freedom. And I didn't realize that that's what was holding me back um, with having that group. So I guess what I would say is to really like, if you like feel any type of like resentment or any type of like drain to really self-assess and figure out why, like, and at that point, see, I, I did that, but I found excuses and it's also to let go of the excuses and just do it, push past that limit. Because now I feel like I have more time to add more stuff into my life. Um, but it also is a huge growth moment um, as well on to like, when it's time to let go, it is time. And you really got to like search into yourself and really find it. Um, so it's, yeah. No, powerful. Yes. Meditate on it. Yes. But I love that you said that stop making excuses. I feel like that is our number one kind of blockage that happens. And with letting go, because a lot of times um, what happens is, and I know this is hard for everyone, but family members, right? So we think that all of our family must have access to us all the time. But unfortunately, there are people who are very negative and who are going to drain you. And we make up an an excuse and normally it's, you know, but they're my family. They're my family. They're my family. No, stop making those excuses. Let them go. If they are not energetically on the level that you want to be on, it's okay to set boundaries. It's okay not to talk to them all the time. It's okay to not give them access to yourself. So I, I totally agree with that one. And, um, yeah, it's really hard because when you even that make a commitment to maybe a group, we feel that we must continue with that group. But again, like you said, sometimes the universe, the universe for you completely kept telling you, get out, get out, get out. And you were just like, no, no, no. And now the universe was like, no, I'm putting a stop. It was like, no more fighting. I'm doing it for you. I'm like, well, what can I do now? Cause that's also something I've been working on is letting go tr- control to surrender to whatever is happening like today. So I, uh, my husband was supposed to tattoo. He was supposed to work at our business. 
and the power was out. So we have cameras there and they wouldn't work. And I'm like, well, why aren't the cameras working? Why aren't they can't aren't the camera? I'm like, what's going on? Oh gosh. But then I was like, hey, hey, stop, Bethany, don't freak out. It's okay. And I did some breathing. And then I went on to the energy the energy website. <laughs> the the our electric yeah. website. Yeah. <laughs> and um and I found out we had it was um outage. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, there was a power outage and they weren't, they were estimating that it wouldn't be back on till tomorrow at like noon. So we're like, okay, well, we've got to cancel the tattoo for today. And this was about like nine, nine thirty this morning when it was going on. Um, and I was just like, it was kind of affecting my morning because I kept focusing on it. And I'm like, you know what? No, I'm going to let it go. And I went on with my day. I did some yoga. I did like a pause, breathe and reflect moment. You know, I got work done and instead of, um, it's kind of sulking in it. Cause that's what I would have done. I would have sulked in it, but you know, and I let go of the control cause the power's out. I can't control it. And then about two hours later, it went back on. But by this time we already have the tattoo canceled. So it's like, Hey, we got a day off. Nice. You know, <laughs> I like that in the past, like you were talking about money stories, this would have affected that money story being like, oh my gosh, now what are we going to do? What are we, oh gosh, you know, it'd been a victim, but instead I empowered myself and I just, it's a magical feeling. And I hope everyone that's listening can find that. And I hope you can find it. I, I just hope everyone can find it. <laughs> no, I, that is a powerful story. And I love that um, within that, right? You started doing things that helped you to kind of release that. Because a lot of uh, times we will sit and we will be consumed by it. And then we are not productive at all. And we don't do anything, which typically most people either watch TV or get on social media and just keep Mm -hmm. going. So, and again, like even with tribes, it helps you to hold you accountable to keep doing those things that are going to progress you in the end. I love that you said like the 30 day challenges. I know we, we, um, (laughs) we watch the same person on YouTube is, uh, yoga with (laughs) Adrian. And I love when she does her 30 day, um, yoga journeys and it just, it helps me be in a line. I'm like, no, you're right. I should be committed to 30 days of doing yoga And I will say anyone out there, check her out because she's awesome. (laughs) Um, And also, I love how she does it because, you know, she gradually increases like the difficulty. So it's like, oh, anyone can do this, not just, you know, advanced people. Uh, Or she'll give modifications in a way like, oh, if you're more advanced here, like, yeah, I love yoga with Adrian. She's one person I started yoga with. Me too. (laughs) yeah like synchronicities right because <laughs> oh, I feel like how she brings in fun to it like she'll joke around and, oh, you know, she's just... so funny yeah <laughs> and her dog I love her dog <laughs> yeah honestly with my dog I when I first started yoga I'd be like sugar why can't you be like Benji do yoga with me <laughs> and now she totally comes to me like when I do yoga if I do yoga she wants to sit nearby in the same room I'm like yes <laughs> I put it out to the universe. <laughs> yeah, it did it. Now, and sometimes it looks like Sugar wants to do yoga. She'll do her like downward dog, you know, type stuff and stretch. And I'm like, yeah, I see you. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I love it. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I think it all comes in alignment with one another. And, you know, even for me, it was something I really had to get out of, especially when I came back here to the U S was getting out of this routine of, you know, just being mindless pretty much. I will say that I feel like I was mindless, you know, cause I'm constantly consuming TV or, um, social media. And then again, I, I kind of like become disconnected from everyone and I start being a hermit and like, Hmm, I'm not going to talk to anyone. And that's when I was just like, no, I, if I want to be successful in this life, I need to find people that are going to help me be successful. 
And, you know, even you and Yana being able to talk about this deep stuff is amazing. I've loved being it every week to be able to go to those calls and just be so vulnerable and be ourselves and share with one another. Um, and, you know, again, all these different tribes, it's been amazing. Like, and again, everyone find, I would say, so my thing, you know, how it says like, you're like the five closest people that you're around have five different tribes. <laughs> I, was just about to, I was thinking that. Yes. Like have five different tribes. Cause like I can attest to it. There's that shamanism for the people heal the unicorn. Um, the, the friends I met from that other group I was in, uh, and then there's like two other groups, but yeah, that's, yeah. Yes. I agree. No, I agree. I just, I think it's so powerful. And again, I'm so grateful that we became a little tribe and that you've joined my tribe. Um, And yeah, just everything has worked out amazing. I think you, the universe put you in my life for a reason. And I'm so grateful for that. (laughs) Yes, I agree. I'm grateful that we are, that our paths meant. Yes. And can I say too, I loved seeing um, the transformation of us over the course of like our videos. Um, It was just like amazing. Cause I feel like in the beginning, it was just like, all of us wanted to like, (laughs) but then as we got to know each other, it was like, Oh, okay. Like, no, let's do this differently. And we kind of came into our own and it's like, all right, no, like you can speak. I want to hear what you have to say. And then I will speak. And then this, so it was this nice uh, movement flow. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It helped uh, with active listening. Cause that's something I used to like, I, that I would, that I wanted to work on and I thought I was working on it, but then get jumping into like heal the, Uni- heal, the, blah, blah, <laughs> heal the Unicorn podcast. It was like, oh, here's the real life example to teach me active listening and I that's one skill and among other things of course (laughs) (laughs) but you know that was one skill that I've been extremely grateful for those podcasts is that active listening of Mm -hmm. not jumping right in because I think one of those episodes I I apologize to you guys because I was like man I am so sorry I cut you guys off (laughs) but it's like you know that growing the learning that was my awareness to it and I'm just grateful that I was that you guys held the space for me to grow and for I mean for all of us to really grow because I've Mm -hmm. seen a huge transformation in all three of us since we've been doing it and uh we there is 31 31 episodes yeah yeah I know I'm not a part of all 31 because I'm not always available unfortunately but (laughs) yeah no but you're there for majority of them you know Yeah. (laughs) yeah you're so but you know it's just like that we've done it for so you at least joined a couple times you know a month there's always so like for the months that we I think I figured out to like seven months of that podcast and I I feel like it's it's a lot of growth and I can't wait to get back into it but I'm so grateful I get to be your guest on your podcast like right <laughs> I said it before but it's just an honor it's a huge yeah. honor your baby And it feels good that you wanted me to be a part of your baby. Of course, of course. I've been, um, like you said, really meditating with it. I'm like, okay, who do, you know, one, I love. (laughs) And two, I just feel like really would connect with this and really has an inspirational story or that I just connect with and have a great conversation with every time. And cut like learn from these conversations every time every time every time (laughs) you guys I learned so much oh hey I learned so much from you too even you know before we hit record I learned so much you know about you know energy and I love you know that you do that um and it just sparked this thing in me and everything in me was like no, you need to learn from her. Take what she's telling you and practice it. So thank you. Now I'm going to go clear all of my uh, beautiful stones and crystals. Nice. Yay. Yay. So it's, it's that collective. We give 
and we receive. <laughs> yes, yes, it is all about that energy exchange, which that was something I definitely had to learn as well. It's like, okay, my game, you can't give, 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 give. You also need to receive as well. And I think that that was the biggest thing with, again, resonating and finding those tribes where it's like, you're not just giving and never receiving right. from a tribe, but it's that constant flow of receiving and giving that helps. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree. Well, I know that you have to leave soon. So I have just a few more questions for you. If yeah. that's okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So I would first ask, how could you advise people to find their authentic self? or how to become their authentic self? Um, to dig deep, get, get, you gotta get past those that your inner critic and your ego, you gotta, and you gotta, I feel like there has to be a balance with it all as well. But I, I guess another thing is to go after your curiosities. Cause if I didn't go after my curiosities, I wouldn't have known that I like yoga or to be a writer or to that. I love self care and like self love. Um, so it's just to push past the limits and just go for it. Just do it, you know, just find the confidence. And if that means you got to, you, you need to find some tools, you know, find the tools, uh, take the time to find the tools to help you grow. And sometimes that means you need therapy or life coaching, or, you know, you can go online and you can find um, a teacher. You learn it from your friend, you know, your family member, like we're all teachers and it's just really to be aware and open, open to it all. So like be open to like releasing and let it go and then healing and then adding in, you know, and filling your cup up. Um, yeah. Oh, I yeah. like that. I will say we are also all students as well. I think sometimes we have that. It's like, no, we are teachers and students. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, I was just saying, I'm glad you put that in. That's a good point. <laughs> I know. I always forget that one. I'm like, oh, we're all teachers. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. We're all students too. <laughs> yeah. We're always learning. <laughs> always, always. It's my biggest yeah. thing. If you don't learn something new every day. You, you need to. <laughs> yeah, can, yeah. So is there a mantra, a quote, a saying that you go by right now in your season of life? There's quite a few because it depends on what day it is for me. Um, so I and also every day I have a list of affirmations that I say to myself. So I don't know if you want to hear everything or you just want to hear a few. I guess pick like two that really, really resonate with you. Okay. So the ones that really resonate is this thing that I do where, um, so I have these mantras that I do. It depends on what chakra it is. So I have hung sa, which is a release, releasing when no longer serving you. And then om shireen, which is about accepting in the abundance and just having abundance wash over you. Um, so what I'll do is I'll inhale Om Shreem, exhale, Hung Sa. And it's that bringing the abundance and exhale what's no longer serving me. And that's, that's probably the one that resonates the most and it helps me find balance and grounding more. I like that. I should do that. Okay. I got it. I got it. <laughs> um, and last question, do you have a book recommendation for everyone? recommendation mm -hmm. not necessarily no are you reading any current books there's a few books that I have that I want to read <laughs> okay <laughs> I started um one of them is about someone that's similar to you where they traveled to Guatemala and they live in Guatemala now but her book was the, like her story of how she traveled and then how to do it yourself is in the book as well, like different things, like different groups to look up, you know, different, yeah, di different aspects of like mm -hmm. traveling outside of the country. So, and it's, uh, gosh, the title is not coming to my mind right now. <laughs> it's sorry. okay. You can send it yeah. later and I can put it in okay. the show notes. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a really good book. It's by Erica Derrickson. 
Okay. Hey, look, you remember the name. That's important. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I believe she only has one book. So if you look her name up, you'll find her book. Um, but yeah, so that's one that I want to get into. And then I got a poetry book mm. uh, by Luke McGuire. Okay. Yeah. And Bethany, last thing, um, is there a way or, um, actually words are not coming to me. How can people connect with you? <laughs> people can connect with me on Facebook by looking at my name, Bethany Briggs. Uh, you can message me, you can comment on one of my posts, and do whatever for that. Um, and then also I have an Etsy store where I sell a couple items that have some inspirational quotes on there and you can message me on there as well but I think Facebook is the best way to get a hold of me perfect well Bethany thank you so much I'm so grateful and blessed to have you in my life and have you on this podcast so thank you so much I'm so grateful thank you this was so much fun I loved our little hangout session I definitely have been missing you so this was this was great Wow, what a powerful connection this was. Not only are me and Bethany in a tribe together, being able to see where other people are at and to see how they find different tribes and what resonates with them because we are all so different, but we are all also the same. So going out and finding those five tribes that you can connect with in all different areas of your life. And you should have that. You should have one for your personal growth. You should have one for your business growth. You should have one for your hobbies, for your activities. One that maybe is making you active. Having all of those different tribes is going to help you to overcome so many obstacles. Because, well, life is full of obstacles, but we need that accountability. We need those people to help us, to push us, to be able to share what we are going through right now in this moment. So it's really amazing to find these tribes and go and flourish in them. There are many ways to find tribes. There are are local places probably around your city that are putting on events all the time. There is also a ton of Facebook groups, and I'm sure if you Google, there is a ton of them as well. So go out, start making a list of different groups that you would love to be a part of. Maybe you love reading, so go find a book club. Maybe you love hiking, go find a hiking club. Do all of these little things to help you. To surround yourself with the people that you should be surrounding yourself with. But again, always remember that there is a time to let go and maybe a time to move on from groups and finding a different one. Or if you can't find a group, create a group. Create a group for you. And there are so many people that are going to come and love what you are talking about and want to get involved. So... I highly suggest that this week, go and find a tribe. Find one that is going to keep you connected to the world around you, to the people around you, to the things that bring you light in your life, that you love doing and that you want to do more of. Because right now, more than ever, we need this connection, connection with one another And being able to be vulnerable and share what is going on in our life. And be able to speak our truth. So I hope you took away some amazing teachable moments from this connection I had with Bethany Briggs. All of her information will be linked down below as well as with my information. Again, if you have not checked out our Facebook page, come on over to facebook.com slash teach travel talk tribe. You can also come over to my website, mindfullymovingmegan.com. 
That will also be in the show notes below and come see what I have going on. We have amazing courses for you that will be published soon. But if you are worried about maybe the spiritual journey so far and what it entails, come on over. I have a free mini course that teaches you the different steps that you must take to go on the spiritual journey. So I can't wait until next time. And I want to say again, thank you so much for listening and always being here for me. You are important and you are important to me. So until next time, my beautiful tribe, namaste.